Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. Today we'll do, in this video, we'll do some more percentage problems, part 2. We did part, we did problems number 1 through 10 in the previous video. We'll pick up from problem number 11. In the previous video of percentage problems, as we were doing the problems, we came across three vocabulary words, and I promised you that I was, I was going to tell you where we learned the words and what day. So here they are. The word cogent, which means to be persuasive, cogent, something that we learned on day number seven of our vocabulary lessons. Penultimate, which means second to the last, something that we learned on day number 11. Again, just type in vocabulary words, vocabulary words, day number 11. And veritable is something that we learn on day number 61. These are good words to learn, just like the math math problems that we're doing here, just like we're, we are here to improve our math skill. These are good problems, uh, good words to know in the event that you're preparing for GRE, GMAT, or SAT, or ACT, or TEs, or HESES. It will help you get better score. Let's get going. Problem number 11. This is 150% of 68 is what? 168, 150% of 68 is what? As always, we can solve it algebraically or we can do it more intuitively. Let's do the algebraic, algebraic method first. Let's do the, the, the geeky academic method first and then we'll worry about doing it intuitively. 150%. Doing it algebraically means we have to set up an equation. 150% means over 100, of means times, 68 is means equals, and what is our unknown. There you go, that's all it is. Divide top and bottom by 50, if you divide top and bottom by 50, 100 will become 2, and 150 become 3. We have a 2 at the bottom, we have 68 at the top, let's divide top and bottom by 2. We divide top and bottom by 2, 6 has 3 2's and 8 has 4 2's, so it's 34 times 3. The answer is 34 times 3. That's 12, carry 1, looks like 102. Now, other way we could have done it without so setting it up so academically is to simply realize, is to simply realize that 100% of 68, 100% of 68, of course, is 68. We don't want 100%, we want 150%, so we add another 50% to it. Another 50% of 68. Another 50% of 68 would be half of the amount. Half of 68 is 34. And if we add them up, what we will end up is, if we add up these two figures, what we will have here is 150%. 100% plus 50%. Let's see what we get. We get 12, carry 1, 9 and 10, 102, of course, same as before. Let's do the next one. So we don't actually have to solve it academically, algebraically, uh, in a geeky, nerdy, orthodox, classical way all the time. If you can find it quicker way, take advantage of it. Number 12. Number 12 says 0.7% of 500 is what? Again, we will do it both methods. Let's first do the academic method by setting it up in, in, in an equation. 0.7 0.7% means over 100, of means times, 500, is means equals, and here is our unknown. There you go. Divide top and bottom by 100. If you divide top and bottom by 100, 100 goes away, and 500 will become 5, and essentially x equals 7, 0.7 times 5. x equals 7, 0.7 times 5. We know 7 times 5 is 35, so 0.7 times 5, we have to move the decimal will become 3.5. The answer is 3.5. So that's one way of doing it. Let's do it a little bit differently. Another way we could have looked at the same thing is to simply realize, is to simply realize that 1%, 1 percent, 1 percent of 500 is 5. Very simple, very straightforward. We're not interested in 1 percent, we're interested in 0.7 percent. The question is asking what is 0.7 percent? 0.7% is same as 7 tenth. So if you multiply this side of the equation by 7 tenth, we simply have to multiply that side by 7 tenth. And we are done. 
1 times 7 times is 0 0.7, so here we have 0.7 percent right there. If we multiply this side by 7 10, we have to do the same thing here, we are done. Divide top and bottom by 5, and 5 goes away, and 10 becomes 2, and what we end up here is 7 over 2, which is 3 and a half. Let's do one more. Number, number 13. Number 13. Number 13 says 21 is 30 percent of what? 21 is 30 percent of what? Again, 21, let's first do it algebraically, is means equal, 30 percent means over 100, of means times, and here is your x. We want the x by itself. So let's divide, let's multiply both sides of the equation by 100 over 30. So this 100 goes away with that 100, this 30 will go away with that 30. And what we are left here, what we are left with is x. So x equals this amount right here. 100 times 21 over 30. As you can see, this is turning into a freak show. It shouldn't. It's a very straightforward problem. We'll do it in a straightforward way in a second. Divide top and bottom by 10, 0 goes away. Divide top and bottom by 3, 3 goes away and 21 becomes 7 and we end up with 10 times 7 which is 70. Which is 70. How else could we have looked at this problem? Well, we are told here, we are told right here that 21% is 30%. 21, we are told 21 is 30%. So watch what happens. If 21 is 30%. We are told that if 21 is 30%, I'm going to change the color for emphasis. If 21 is 30%, then it stands to reason that 10% must be a third of it. If you divide this by 3, we have to divide this by 3, which means 10% equals 7. There is your 10%. If 10% equals 7, if 10% equals 7, so we just found out here that 10%, 7 is 10%. If 7 is 10%, then the whole amount must be 10 times as much. 10 times as much must be 100%. 100% is 70. Again, even this part is too much of a fudge. Just look at this. 21%, 21 is 30%. If 21 is 30%, then 10% must be a third of that amount. 10% must be a third of this amount, which is 7. If 10% is 7, 100% must be 70. It's so simple, in fact, that you don't even have to do it out. You can just do it in your head. Let's do number 14. Number 14. It says 11 is what percent of 44? 11 is 1% of 44. Again, we're going to do it out. We're going to do it out academically, but as you can see, it's quite straightforward. We are, I hope you're able to see right away that 11 is 1 quarter of 44. 11 is 1 quarter of 44. Well, 1 quarter is 25%. That's it. 11 is 25% of 44. Let's do it out. 11 is means equal. What is our unknown, which is x, percent means over 100, of means times, and then 44. As you can see, this turns into a veritable freak show. Veritable is something that we learned, as, as, we, as, we, as we said before, on day number 61. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, watch those videos, just type in vocabulary words, day 61, and learn the word. Let's, 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 let's get the x by itself. In order to get the x by itself, you have to multiply both sides by 100. That takes care of this 100 and divide both sides by 44. And that will take care of this 44. So x is by itself. You have 11 on the top, you have 44 on the bottom. 11 goes into 44 four times. 
we have 100 on the top, 4 on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 4, and 100 has 25 fours. 100 has 25 fours. But we didn't have to do all of this thing, this was completely unnecessary. This was a waste of time, as a matter of fact, in the real exam. Let's do the next one. Because you always have to keep in mind, you always have to keep in mind that even though in this in this in these videos we go at a leisurely pace, but we are preparing for the exam for this for one of the standardized exam where where time where time is of the essence. Name of the game there. Name of the game there is to be able to move at a brisk pace. You cannot sit there and spend two minutes on a problem. Number 15. What percent of 50 is 12? What percent of 50 is 12? Let's find out. What is our unknown? X percent means over 100. Of means times 50 is means equal 12. I think I'm going to change the marker. I think this marker is getting very light. It's dying. I'm going to change it. Get a new one. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have to get the x by itself. We have to get the x by itself. Divide both, multiply both sides by 100. Oh, actually, we're making a fuss about nothing. Before we do that, before we do that, we have a 100 here, we have a 50 here. Let's divide top and bottom by 50, and we end up with 2. So we have x over 2 equals 12, which implies that x must be 24. Now the question is, would you, are you able to see that the answer is 24 without doing any of this work? I hope you are. This question here is, what percent of 50 is 12? Well, what if they had asked you this question? What if the question was, what percent, what if the question was, what percent of 100 is 12? What percent of 100 is 12? Well, what percent of 100 is 12? 12 is 12 percent of 100. 12 is 12 percent of 100. But instead of 100, instead of 100 we have 50. What percent of 50 is 12? So, what percent of 50 is 12? Instead of 100, if half as much, the percentage, percentage is going to be twice as much. Instead of 12 percent, instead of 12 percent, it's going to be 24 percent. Because it's the same amount, it's the same amount, 12, but instead of taking it out of 100, we're taking it out for an amount that is half as much. So if 12, for example, for example, if 10 happens to be, if 10 happens to be 10% of 100, then it stands to reason that 10 should be 20% of 50. Because 10 over 50 is one fifth. Do you understand? So if you take half as much amount, total amount, then the percentage of this given part will be twice as much. Number 16. Number 16. 15% of 700 is what? 15% of 700 is what? Again, we can do it, we can turn it into a freak show or we can do it the quick and dirty way. Let's do the academic way first. 15% means over 100. Of means times. 700 is means equals, and here is your unknown what. Divide top and bottom by 100, 100 will go away and we'll end up with 15 times 7. The answer is 15 times 7. Now let's do the quick way, okay? Question is what is 15% of 700? We know, we know 10% of 700, we know 10% of 700 will be 70. If 10% of 770, then it stands to reason that 50%, that implies that 50% of 700 must be half as much, which is 35. 
So we have 10%, we have, it should say 5%, not 50%. If 10%, if 10% is 700, 5% must be 35. We have 10%, we have 5%, which means 15%. 15% must be the sum of these two numbers, which is 105, which is exactly what this is. This two number 17. Number 17. Twenty-five percent of what is six? Twenty-five percent of what is six? Again, saying that twenty-five percent of what is six, which is same as saying, which is same as asking one quarter of what is six. One quarter of what is six? The answer is one quarter. One quarter of twenty-four is six. One quarter of twenty-four is six. We don't have to do anything here. It's very simple. But if you want to set it up, it will be 25% means over 100, off means times, what is the unknown part, is means equals 6. We want the x by itself, so x by itself would be 6 times 100, bring the 100 to the other side, 25 at the bottom, and you see, divide top and bottom by 25, and 100 becomes 4, and 4 times 6, 4 times 6 is exactly 24, which makes perfect sense. Because if 25% is 6, if 25% of something is 6, then the whole amount must be 4 times 6. Right here, 4 times 6, 24. Number 18. What percent? What percent of... 350 is 14. What percent of 350 is 14? Well, let's find out, shall we? Something like this is a little bit difficult to do it intuitively right away. You might be, able, you might or you might not be able to see it right away, the intuitive way, the quick way, the quick and dirty way. And if that's the case, do it out the, the academic way, the algebraic way, the orthodox way, the classical way, the normal way. Do you understand? by setting it up in a form of an equation. So here we go. What is our unknown? Percent means over 100. Percent means over 100. Off means times. 350. Is means equals 14. Don't confuse these two symbols. This is my multiplication sign and this is the unknown. In the unknown x, I do not raise, lift my hand and in the multiplication sign I go like that. So, we want the x by itself, so let's do that. We want x by itself, so x is going to be equal to, x is going to be equal to 14 times 100 over 350. I'm not going to show the steps here, but essentially we're multiplying both sides by 100 and dividing by 350. So, let's divide top and, let's divide top and bottom by 10. If we divide top and bottom by 10, the zeros are going to drop out. Dra divide again top and bottom by 5. If we divide top and bottom by 5, 10 will become 2 and 35 will become 7 because 7 fives are 35. Anything else we can do? We have a 7 here, we have a 14 here. I, I hope you are able to see that 14 and 7 go together. Two sevens are 14. So let's divide top and bottom by 7. And 14 will become 2. And the answer is 2 times 2. 2 times 2. X equals 4. X equals 4. Don't put a percentage sign next to it. It's not 4%, it's just 4. X equals 4. X does not equal 4%. X equals 4. X is the unknown part. That's the word part right here. So what we do now, what we do now, if we go back to the original problem and we replace this unknown what with what we are claiming it to be. We are claiming that this unknown is 4. So what we are claiming here, what the claim that we are making is that 4%, 4% of 350 is 14. 
And as long as that claim is correct, then our answer is correct. Let's find out, shall we? Let's verify it. Let's verify it. What we're claiming is that 4% of 350 is 14. But we know, we know 10%, we know 10% of 350 is 35. 10% of 350 is 35, that we do know. Well, if 10% is 35, that implies that 1% of 350 must be 3.5. 3.5, which I'm going to write as, which I'm going to write as, 3.5. Well, if 1%, if 1% is 3.5, we are claiming that the 4% is 14. Let's find out. So if 1% is 3.5, then that in turn implies that 4% 4 of 350 must be, must be 4 times 3.5. 4 times 3.5. Let's find out what 4 times 3.5 is, shall we? We know, we know 4 times 3, we know 4 times 3 is 12. That we do know. And we also know that 4 times a half will give us four halves. Four times half will give us four halves. Four halves is two. Two halves make one. Four halves make two. So two plus twelve is fourteen. Our, our claim is indeed correct. Four percent of three fifty is four and a half, is, is fourteen because one percent of three fifty is three and a half. Therefore two percent will be three and a half and a three and a half which is seven. And therefore if two percent is seven, four percent must be fourteen. Number 19. Number 19. Our penultimate problem. Our penultimate problem, something that we learned on day number 11, I believe it was. I told you in the beginning of this video. I forget now. Number 19. And these problems are good practice regardless of which exam you're preparing for, whether you're going to sit for SAT, GRE, GMAT, ACT, HESI, TES, as I told you before. The basic math is the same in all of these exams. Here's the next one 60% of 30% of what is 81 60% of 30% of what is 81 I didn't want to write it in two lines because I wanted to I wanted to squeeze everything in one line because we want to be able to write the equation underneath it we're going to translate it word by word the reason why reason why most people well not most people but some people have difficulty solving some problem a problem like this is because they try to come up with the right equation, they try to come up with the equation for the problem in one shot, in just one go. Don't do it like that. Just translate one word at a time and if you try, as long as you translate one word at a time you will see always that the right equation will emerge all by itself. You won't have to do anything. You won't have to think about it. So let's do this, shall we? 60 percent means over 100. That part we do know. Off means times. Off means times. 30 percent means over 100 of means times what is the unknown is is the equal sign and 81 follow I'm going to rewrite this entire thing down here so that we can we have room to manipulate here so what we have is this 60 over 100 times 30 over 100 times x equals 81 if you want to solve for x, x will have to equal to 81 over 100 by 81 times 100. This 100 is going to come on the top, this 100 is going to go on the top, and this 30 and 60 will come on the bottom. You with me? Let's do it on the top here. x equals 81 times 100 times 100 
So what can we do? Well, we see, I see two zeros here. I see a zero here and zero here. Let's divide top and bottom by 100. If you divide the top quantity and bottom quantity by 100, one of the 100 will disappear and two zeros will go away. That was quite straightforward. What else do we see? Let's divide top and bottom by 2. I see a 100 here and I see, I see a 6 here. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 6 will become 3 and 100 will become 50. 3 times 3, 3 times 3 is 9 and I see 81. 81 divided by 9 is 9. Or if you like, you can do it in two steps. Let's divide top and bottom by two. Uh, we, let's do it in two steps. Let's divide top and bottom by three first. Instead of dividing by nine, I was about to divide 81 by nine because we have three times three. If you, if you wish, you can do it in two steps. Let's divide top and bottom by three. How many threes does eight have? Eight has two threes. Two threes are six. Two threes are six. After we take away six from the eight, we have a remainder of two. So that remainder of 2 goes and joins the 1 and becomes 21. One more time. 8 has, eight has how many 3's? 8 has 2 3's. 2 3's are 6. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 1's and becomes 21. And 21 has, 21 has 7 3's. And that takes care of one of the 3's. Now we have one more go. How many 3's does 2 have? 2 has no 3's, 2 has no 3's. That 2 goes and joins to 7 becomes 27 and 27 has 9 3's and that will take out oh. Of course it's 9 because we already knew 81 divided by 9 is 9. So it's 9 times 50. 9 times 50. X equals 9 times 50 which is 450. Now what we have to do is, now what we have to do is, go back to the original problem replace this unknown quantity of unknown this word what replace it replace it with what we are claiming it to be we are claiming that this unknown quantity is 450 can you convince me can you convince me in a cogent manner in a persuasive manner that this statement is in fact valid You have to be able to convince you. You have to be able to convince somebody in a cogent, intuitive manner, not in a geeky way, not in a nerdy way, not in a mechanical way, not in a mathematical way, but in a cogent manner at a gut level, intuitively, persuasively, that this claim is a valid claim. What we're claiming is that 60% of 30% is 450. Let's find out. Or rather, 60% of 30% of 450. 60% of 30% of 450 is 81. Let's find out, shall we? Let's start with this part. Let's first find out 30% of 450. 30% 30 of 450, that's the first step. We know 10%, we know 10% of 450 is 45. That we do know. That's very straightforward. We're not interested in 10%, we are interested in 30%. So multiply this by 3. Now it becomes the 30%. If you're going to multiply this side by 3, let's multiply this side by 3. And how much is 45 times 3? 40 times 3 is 120, 120 plus 15 would be 135. 135. So that takes care of that part. That takes care of 30% of 450. Now we have to take a 60% of this amount. Now we have to take a 60% of that amount. Let's find out, shall we? 60%. 60%. Of 135, and if as if we can show that 60% of 135 is 81, then this answer is correct. Well, I hope you are able to see. Don't leave 60% as 60%, or if you like, you could 60% means 60 over 100. 60 over 100 percent means over, off means times 135. Divide top and bottom by 20, and if you divide top and bottom by 20. 60 will become 3 and 100 will become 5, which is what I was going to do to begin with. Instead of writing 60 over 100, I was going to write 60% as 3 fifths, which is exactly what this is, because 60% 60 60 means 60 over 100, and if you divide top and bottom by 20, it becomes 3 over 5. So I'm going to write here as 3 fifths. What is 3 fifths? What is 3 fifths of 135? Well, let's find out, shall we? 135 is the same as 135 over 1. 
we see 5 at the bottom, we see 135 on the top, let's divide top and bottom by, let's divide top and bottom by 5. How many 5 does 1 have? 1 has no 5. 1 has no 5. That 1 goes and joins the 3 and, become 13, and becomes 13. 13 has two fives. 13 has two fives. After we take away two fives from the 13, after we take away two fives from the 13, two fives are 10. After we take away 10 from the 13, we are left with a remainder of 3. That 3 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 35. And 35 has 75. 35 has 75. So we took care of 5. And that's it. The answer is 27 times 3. Answer is 27 times 3 and 27 times 3 is indeed 81. Is indeed 81. Let's do one last one, number 20. Number 20. I have no idea how long the video has been already. We'll find out. Yes. Number 20 says 75% of 72 is same as 60% of set it up as the equation one word at a time that's the idea 75 percent means over 100 of means times 72 is means equals as as same as as same as means equals is as same as this entire thing is as same as that's equal then we have 60 percent means over 100 of means times and this is our unknown word which we're going to represent the letter x let's multiply let's multiply both sides by 100 if we multiply this side by 100 and if we multiply this side by 100 what we find is that this 100 is going to go away and so is this one so we didn't have to do it in a baby way now i'm going to do the same thing without the baby way you see, we have 100 at the bottom here, we have 100 at the bottom. You, are, you should be able to see there without doing the baby step that if you, if you were to multiply this side by 100, this 100 will drop. And if you multiply that side by 100, this 100 will go over. So this 100 drop, drops out and here we have a 60, which means x basically equals, x equals 75 times 72 over 60. Let's divide top and bottom by 15. You can see the 50, 75 is a multiple of 15 and 60 is a multiple of 15. Now if you did not see that, if you did not see that 75 is a multiple of 15, then do it in baby steps. Divide, divide by 3 first, or divide by 2 first, whatever you like. We could have divided by 2 first if you like. Let's divide by 2 if you like. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. I see an even number here. This is an even number. How many 2's does 7 have? 7 has 3 2's. 7 has 3 2's. 3 2's are 6. 3 2's are... 6. This is what we are saying. 3, 3, 2's are 6. Of course, nobody is going to argue with that. 3, 2's are 6. If I have 3, 2's, 1, 2, 2, 2's, and 3, 2's, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2's are 6. After we take away 6 from the 7, after we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. That 1 goes and joins the 2 and becomes 12. And how many 2's does 12 have? 12 has 6 2's. Since we divided the top by 12, 2, we have to divide the bottom by 2. 6 has 3 2's and 0 has no 2's. Of course, 60 divided by 2 is 30. And similarly, 72 divided by 2 is 36 because half of 70, we know half of 70 is 35. If 70 is made up of 35 2's, then it stands to reason that 72 must have, must have 36 2's. We see 36, we see 30. Can we divide top and bottom by 6 now? It's okay? Or let's divide top and bottom by 6 because otherwise we'll be here forever. If you divide top and bottom, I hope you're able to see that 30 is made up of 5 sixes and 36 is made up of 6 sixes. 6 6 are 36. So this becomes 6 and 6 fives. 5 6 are 30. 
I see a 5 here, I see a 75 here, let's divide top and bottom by 5. How many 5 does 7 have? 7 has 1 5. 7 has 1 5. After we take away 5 from the 7, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 25. And 25 has 5 5's. And that takes care of this 5. The final answer is x equals to 15 times 6. 15 times 6. This is our x. 15 times 6 is 90. 15 times 6 is 90. So again what we're going to do here is go back here and replace this word with what we are claiming it to be. We are claiming it to be 90. And now we have to show now we have to show that this claim is indeed valid. Let's do this, shall we? We need, we need the room, so I'm going to have to erase some of the stuff here. As a matter of fact, most of the stuff, the solution, all of this is going to be gone. Now we're going to show it, okay? Let's show it. What we want to show is that 75% of 72 the same as 60% of 90. 75%, 75% of 72. Well, 75% is 3 quarters. 3 quarters of means times 72. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. How many 4's does 7 have? 7 has 1 4. 7 has 1 4. After we take away 4 from the 7, we have a remainder of 3. That 3 goes and joins the 2, becomes 32. And how many fours does 32 have? 32 has eight fours. Eight fours are 32. You must know your timetables by heart. One through minimum of one through 12, if not one through 20. You must know your timetables one through 12 or at the very least one through 10. And if you do not know your timetables by heart, then watch these videos here. Where are they? Basic math, I should say, right here. Basic math. Basic math, watch the first few videos, watch the first 10 videos in this series, Basic Math, where we learn our timetables, 1 through 10. So one more time, 7 has seven has 1, 4, after we take away 4 from the 7, we have a remainder of 3, 3 goes and joins the 2, becomes 32, and 32 has 8 fours. Since we divide it top by 4, we have to divide bottom by 4, and that 4 goes away. And that gives us 3 times 14. 3 times 14, how much is 3 times 14? How much is 3 times 14? How the hell do I know? I know 3 times 15. That I do know. 3 times 3 15s are 45. If 3 15s are 45, in other words, in other words, if 15 3s are 45, then 14 3s. Instead of 15 3, if you only have 14 3s, that should be 3 less than 45, which is 42. Which makes perfect sense because 3 times 10 is 30, 3 10s are 30, and 3 4s are 12. 12 plus 30 is 42. So that's this side of the equation. Now we have to work on this side and better work out to be 42 because it says this quantity, 42, is the same as 60% of 90. Let's find out here. 60% of 90. Again, 60% is the same as 3 fifths. 3 fifths of 90. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. How many 5 does 9 have? 9 has 1 5. 9 has 1 5. After we take away 5 from the 9, we have a remainder of 4. That 4 goes and joins the 0 and becomes 40. And 40 has 8 fives. 3 times 18. Is 3 times 18 same as 3 times 14? The answer is hell no. So 32. Ah, this is not 4. 7 fours are 28. 7 4s are 28. 8 4s are 32. I don't know why I put down 4 here. It should be 8. It's not 4. One more time. 7 has 1 4. Once we take away 7 has 1 4. Once we take away 4 from it, we have a remainder of 3. 3 goes and joins the 2 becomes 32. And 8 4s are 32. I did say 8, I believe. I did say 8. I don't know why I wrote down 4. It should be 8. It should have been 8. And what, what the final answer we are claiming is, the final answer we are claiming is 3 times 8. 3, 3, 
times 18 rather 3 times 18 3 times 18 which is exactly what we have here 3 times 18 this is same as this 3 times 18 is same as 3 times 18 let me take a look at the time in the back I, I haven't gone anywhere just give me one second I'm still here I think I'm going to stop here because we have 10 more problems I want to do or percentage problems but if I were to do 10 more problems in this video it will become a very long video so I'm going to stop here we're going to do 10 at a time in the first part we did 1 through 10 in this part we did in part number 2 we did 11 through 20 and in part 3 in part 3 look for the part 3 where we'll do number 21 through 30 in the next video okay bye now